Assalamu alaikum. Uh, commutation is the process of uh, getting a unidirectional voltage signal out of a DC machine. Uh, this commutation process is associated with some, uh, some problems. In the last lecture, we talked about the first problem, that is the armature reaction. And in today's lecture, we shall talk about the second problem, that is LDI by DT voltages. To understand uh, this uh, uh, problem associated with DC machines, let's uh, consider the winding diagram of a lap wound DC machine. In lap wound DC machines, two sides of the coil are connected to adjacent commutator segments. And in real machines, we do not have a single turn of wire, rather we have a coil with multiple turns and two ends of the coil coming out, coming out of the coil are connected to adjacent commutator segments in the case of lap wound DC machines. This uh, coil is uh, slightly difficult to uh, draw, so let's uh, re uh, draw this uh, coil by another symbol, that is uh, this one. Coil with multiple turns and two sides of the coil are connected to adjacent commutator segments. Let me erase uh, this uh, uh, coil over here and draw it by this symbol, because it is easier to draw. One coil with uh, two ends connected to adjacent commutator segment, second coil again with two ends connected to adjacent commutator segments and so on. And uh, there are brushes which are in electrical contact with commutator segments. Uh, at this particular time instant, the current which enters this brush will uh, reach the second brush uh, which may be somewhere over here, for example. Uh, and there are two paths for the current to reach from this brush to this one. That is through this uh, brush and then commutator segment and then through this coil into this commutator segment and then the second coil and so on to finally reach at the second brush. This is the first path. There is another path. Uh, the current uh, from the brush enters into this commutator segment and then through this coil into this commutator segment and so on to finally reach at the brush. So you know that uh, this, these commutator segments are on the rotor and rotor is rotating. Uh, this uh, after a while this uh, commutator would have moved and now the brush will be in contact with some other commutator segments. Let's consider this time instant when this uh, brush uh, is in contact with this commutator. Now again, there are uh, two paths for current to flow from this brush into this brush. First one is this path. And the second one is this path. Now, carefully look at this coil. Uh, when brush was in contact with this commutator segment, the direction of current in this coil was this one. And now, when the brush is in contact with this commutator segment, the direction of current in this coil has been reversed. And we know that uh, in an inductor, uh, when there is a rate of change of current, there is a voltage across that inductor and uh, even if this is small we can see that uh, this quantity is quite large because the direction of current has quickly reversed and therefore a uh, high voltage will be there across this inductor and uh, two ends of this inductor there will be high voltage and although the two commutator segments this one and this one are electrically isolated. However, due to high voltages, there will be sparking between the two commutator segments and that sparking will uh, deteriorate the, uh, the uh, commutator segments and will not only result into uh, inefficiency of the machine but also will result into deterioration uh, in, in the commutator segments. This uh, high voltage that is also called voltage kickback that is always there 
whenever there is uh, a rate of change of current in an inductor. If there is sudden change in the uh, current flowing in an inductor, a voltage is there across that inductor and that voltage is called voltage kickback. Uh, to give you an idea about uh, these voltages, let's uh, uh, demonstrate it with some numerical values and let's consider a machine uh, with uh, a machine with 400 amperes. We consider a DC machine with 400 amperes and with two parallel paths. That is, uh, in each parallel path, 200 amperes will be here. 200 amperes. That is, this current is 200 amperes which flows in this path and 200 amperes in the other path. And uh, we assume that this machine is uh, wor wor working at 8000 RPM. We have a machine this uh, running at this speed and with 50 commutator segments. Uh, how much time it will take uh, to move uh, this brush from this commutator segment to this commutator segment? We can see that uh, in one minute there are uh, in one minute that is in 60 seconds 60 seconds there are 8000 revolutions uh, this is the time in which there will be a complete revolution and in one revolution there are 50 commutator segments that is one commutator segment uh, will take uh, 60 divided by 8000 multiplied by 50 seconds each commutator segment will be in contact with brush for this much time time uh, there are 50 commutator segments in one complete revolution so one segment will require this much time and this time uh, comes out to be equal to 0 0.0015 seconds so this is the time in which this, com uh, this uh, commutator segment will move on such that this brush Will, which was previously in contact with this commutator segment will be at this commutator segment. And for this machine, uh, delta i by delta t, delta i rate of change in uh, change in current, previously 200 amperes in this direction and now 200 amperes in this direction. So net change is 400 amperes. 400 divided by 0 0.0015 and this comes out to be equal to and hence E which is L di by dt so even if L is very small this quantity di by dt is very large so there will be a very large voltage and due to that there will be a sparking in the commutator segments so this is the second problem associated with commutation in real machines in the next lecture, we shall talk about solution to these problems.